Amen. Oh, God. Somebody shout, I believe. I believe. Hallelujah. Oh, that sounds good. Great man. Come on, give God some praise. This is just $5. You can see the Adam Turner, any of the any of the team to get your copy and uh, be refreshed by the week. It's a celebration and an event. All right, guys. Saturday, September 30th is going to be our 10 year anniversary. Yeah. 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 It's going to be awesome. Tickets are $50 for individuals or $100 for couples. And it's going to be great. It's going to be great food, dancing, 
sitting here and just, uh, it's really a party, a huge, huge party. You don't want to miss this. For more information, contact Mr. Tracy Jones. Guys, you don't want to miss this. Saturday, September 30th. It's going to be our 10 year anniversary. Guys, check out our website, onlyjustbelieve.org. From our website, you can put in your time, your offering, you can view announcements and read announcements, and you can also stream any of our Sunday services and praise and worship right from the website, onlyjustbelieve.org. We're also filming on Facebook. If you have a Facebook page, or if you're on Facebook, or you're certainly like one, give us a like. We're on Facebook at Living Life and Victory Church. That's facebook.com backslash Living Life and Victory Church. Lastly, we're on YouTube. If you like YouTube, if you like watching YouTube videos from your cell phone or your tablet, check us out. Search keyword LLBC Church. We're right on YouTube, and you can check out any service right on YouTube. Give us a subscribe right away. Guys, and now a word of business. House rules, we want to be very cognizant of the cameras. We are recording the services, they are live, we are here on different networks, everything from HD to the news, to TV, to CBN, to baseball. These services are powerful and anointed, we want to share them with the best of the best of the world, so we can change lives and to, to create uh, friendships and bonds throughout the whole country. It's very important that you help us to make our broadcast successful. Not walk in front of the team. You don't have to do it at all. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. And just uh, work with us on it. We also want to let you know that there's no food in our drink in this section. We want to be just very aware of this. It's very important. This is God's house. We want to respect it. Do not be more drink in this section. It's very important. Help us to keep the central beautiful, up to date, up to the bottom, and just up to the street. Lastly, we are counting your millions and millions and millions of dollars. The, the money that you sell here at the church is very important. It changes lives. We feel we're helping to lead the community and there's so much more. We ask that you please see out of the pastor's offices, out of the office areas, and let's show the money. It's very important. There's so much going on back there counseling, uh, prayer, kind of money, so on and so forth. It's very important that you guys respect this, this area of the sanctuary and just stay out. All right, guys, that concludes our victory announcements. We want to remind you guys to live your life in victory. And guys, we're praying for you every day. Just no matter where you're at, just know that you're, you're cared for, you're loved. The pastors here, they go above and beyond, and they want you to know that they're here for you. So if there's anything that we can do for you guys, just let us know. We're a family. Let's help the family each other up, encourage each other, keep each other in our prayers. Until next time, remember to live your life in victory. Y'all pray for me. I'm, 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 I'm on the slow these today. Uh, something leave that. Did you share it with the church today? But you just told me that. You did? You just did? And I was blessed to know that. I kept asking myself, why am I so slow? What's wrong with me? And then we talked about being a birthday. And he said, well, he said, I'm so ready to go a full birthday. He said, 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 that's what's wrong with me. Good God. I'm back and I'm still that best thing. You have that baby and you know you're tired. And then right my back is exactly how I feel today. And we know the pastors at the hospital all be fine. And uh, we will be with him. Thank God that all is well. Yeah. 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 You know, we got up and had a pass out. And we got up to the hospital and they kept us all to watch him so he was dehydrated. Uh, they said it's infectious, it's a CT scan on him. They said it's infectious, so they give him uh, antibodies back in my bones. So it's kind of serious. So we stayed here with him. So I'm tired from that, being there all day. First, the other attacks we had on people, you know, so we just going to that kind of stuff. So we, I want to uh, get up and say, do we have any first time visit plays, any first time visit? I know it's Paula. I know that very much is cute. It's a hatchet. The king of the scale of the actual gift from my church. Yeah. Yeah.
and it got so bad, I, I blanked out. I, I had to train in the car. And when I came to, I asked, I asked myself, what day is this? And I forgot what day it was. I thought it was a Saturday. And then I said, I need to blow my horn and let somebody know I'm in danger. I can't remember what happened when I back out again. So I said, I need to move my car. So my daughter's going to work. I don't think about everybody but myself. And I finally got the car moved when I made a circle in, the, in my fold. You know what I'm saying? I live in. When I parked the car, the car was crooked. I didn't even know it. I just, I, I just opened the door and I threw up. Yeah, it didn't let it come out. And I banked out again. The door was open. I just, I banked out. When I finally managed to get in the house, my daughter asked me to come on to work and she, thank God, put skills and my wife's skills, they realized I was in danger. But I don't want to go to the emergency room. I'm strong, I can handle this. It's just a headache, you know. I stayed, at, I stayed in the house for a few, I don't know how long, maybe an hour or so, and found out I went to the hospital. And, uh, they did a girl, but I made it that, that because I was dehydrated. And, and then they know I was dehydrated. I drink a lot of water. I thought I did. But I'm going to tell you, y'all, know, uh, and the witness today will get checked out. Me and the witness will get checked out. I mean, I thought I was the man until I went out at 6 a.m. and got in the car. And I got in the car and I went to the hospital. 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 Amen. Y'all love God. Amen. Thank God for. If you've never been in a place like I've been, you don't really know what, how I feel to be alive. You've been hit all your life, and you, this is not for you. But those who've been in a place where you you just feel like your body did just shut down on you, that's what happens. Your body shut down, and you just thank God for life. I thank God that I have legs to walk on. I thank God for keeping my mind. Because see, I, I lost. Actually, I lost my mind. My mind was not my mind. I blanked out. I didn't know what I was doing. What was, what was that it was for, for those few minutes. And then finally I got home from the hospital. I went to the check. I went to the restroom. I sat down and changed clothes. I sat on the back of the bathroom and something. He kept me again. He kept me again. My enemy. And he's keeping you all the same. He's, he's keeping you. And I'm going to try for a few minutes. I don't know how I'm going to get all this out today, but you stay with me, patient. If you got the first PowerPoint on the screen, go ahead and put that up. I'm going to try to teach this if I can. If I don't, forgive me because I'm going to take my secret few minutes. I don't know, Jesse. Seems like my best advice is not working like you should. Ah. Thank you for giving up in this country in your own season. That's a good point. That's a little bit of a good point. Thank you for giving up in your own season. What are you talking about, Pastor Man? That's a good question. You don't even know what season you're in. And you, you, People giving up around churches and families. Keeping up around quick jobs. Yes. Keeping up. And I want to read these some things concerning this time. In your Bible, and in Ecclesiastes 3 1. New King James Version says, to everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. Please read that, young people. To everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. What? 
But there's a danger of giving up. Nobody can tell you in your off season. Ooh, this is rich. Life moves in cycles. Life moves in seasons. Y'all hear me? Life moves in cycles. Life moves in seasons. Just like the winter, spring, summer, and fall. Life moves in season. My next slide. I'm gonna give you two slides. And I'm gonna give you a whole lot of stuff to look at today. I'm gonna give you two slides. And I want y'all to pick it. Get the second slide up on me. I think it's gonna bring some clarity where you are or where you think you where you're about to go to. Just wanted to bring up something to get to read. What did it say? Season of life cycles. The first one you see is, I know the light kind of together. I can't read what they're saying for some reason. I don't know what happened right there. Spring. The first one should say, it's spring. Yeah. The spring. The spring is the planting stage. Make sure you have enough seed in the ground for your future. What seed we talking about now? We're talking about the spring season. Planting stage is your planting seed as much as possible. Plant seed. Stay active in church. Sow your time, your offerings, giving. What I said before I started talking, danger in your off season. Still plant seed. Still plant seed. Y'all listen to me now. Listen to me. Awesome. What did that one say? Summer. Summer is your pruning stage or a pruning seed. When you plant seeds in the spring, summer comes up. What happens in the summer with your grave? You find weeds. Which I mean, pruning stage means everything you plant, weeds begin to start come up with the other seed, with the other seed. So then you gotta start pruning your garden, what you're working at, what you're doing. You gotta put out the put out the stuff that shouldn't be there. Are y'all listening to me this morning? You're pruning your area, you're pruning yourself, you're pruning your garden, you're pruning glory to God. You, you the plant seeds in living life, and you know you can expect to see growth, but then this other stuff comes up, you get a pull that I'm not, I'm not with that. You prune it out, I'm not going with that. You prune out all the negativity. You prune out things that's, that's not with your, with your destiny. Oh, this is good. I don't know about y'all. What's good? What see, what do we, what do weeds come to do? We when you sow seed. These weeds come to choke the light of your seed. And these, and these things that choke out your destiny. And the wrong things come up if you don't prune in that season with your seed. Other things that come up and choke out your destiny of other wrong ideas about life, church, family. This is going to be good in your right here. This is really going to be good. This is one of my favorites. The next one you'll see is called the fall season. Fall season, ladies and gentlemen, glory to God, is the it's the, it's the process of time of deeds. This is the season when you do good deeds. You just sow the seed, you've been pruning, you gotta do some good deeds. What you're doing, what are you doing at the time while you're in church with your family, on your job? Doing good deeds, helping people, keeping your heart good. Oh, yeah. Helping, serving, submitted, committed with the vision, loyalty to the vision or the, to the house. These are good deeds. I'm almost finished with this, y'all. Then comes the winter season. The winter season is the time of needs. 
get it sewn up, the approved thing, you need to be past four. Now you need to, you need some people come in for you. So you need to go with God. You need help. It's a time to help people. They got other needs. We talk about the danger of coming out of your season of your, uh, 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 when I say danger of coming out, danger of, uh, danger of, danger of giving up in your off season. So you're doing good deeds. You're doing good deeds and you're helping people. It's a time of, it's a time of your life and you're willing to see that you're old. And you've done well all these years. And now all of a sudden now, what you've done well, somebody come to help you. Does that make sense so far? All right? Every season has a certain process. There are three things I want to bring out to you in the Bible that happens in the life season. I just read to you three things. About those seasons. Three things I want to give you, which is good for my three high points. The danger of weariness. The danger of weariness in your Bible. According to Galatians 6. According to Galatians 6, you can, you can put on the screen if you don't have to. New King James Version. It says right here Let him who is taught the word share all good things with him. Who teaches? Verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man sow, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will, of his flesh will reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will, the spirit reap everlasting life. Verse 5. And let, and let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season you will you will you shall reap if you do not lose heart or lose hope. In this season, I'm trying to give you something. Don't be weary of other folks doing well. Who am I talking to this morning? I'm raising my hand. We get, don't get weary in that season. You will weep, you shall weep, if we do not lose heart. Verse 10 says, therefore, watch this young people, as we have opportunity, opportunity is now. Let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the house If y'all knew my body, I am really going to go lay down. Y'all, I'm fighting because I can't get this out. We've been losing soldiers all over the country. I'm talking about the folks in our uniform, the ones that the ones that the war in this morning. We're losing soldiers. The folks that drive churches are losing soldiers. It's losing hope. Second point. The day of doubting. Hebrews 3 12. Beware, brother, lest there be in of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But it's one more another day, while it is called today. Least in of you be hard through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. It's a danger, creatures. Well, Pastor, where is my heart? Is it, man of God? Where is my heart? Is it? I'm already at the end of my notes already, but I want to get this right now. Where is my heart? The Bible says this, brother. He says this. Beware, brother, that be in a in of you, in a in a one of you, when who have an evil heart of unbelief. You gotta catch that. Unbelief is an evil. Look what the Bible says. You just that's the wrong heart about what you 
The living God for you. Stop trusting for the living God. But I don't want to know you Why it is called today, every day. These interviews be hardened to the seed of the sin, for we have become part of Christ if we have, if we hold, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast in the end. First 15 says, what it is to say today, if you will hear his voice, do not part your mind. Do not harm your heart as in rebellion. Do not harm. You can sow seed, not your heart heart. You can sow seed. You didn't do any pulling. You didn't pull nothing. You let all the ways come up. Get about to bring you anything, get everything under the sun. And now your heart is hard toward the pastor. I, I, I got to clean the church. So your heart toward the pastor. He didn't come see me. He didn't give me what I need. But my bill will all do. Now your heart is hard. You just sold the pain time to get on, made the altar, now your heart is hard. Mm. Who are talking to? The danger of doubt. I don't know if I should read this one. This is good. This is really, I don't know if I should get this now, Pastor, but I don't know if this is the hardest one of them all. The danger of giving up. Because there are people who, who the enemy raises up false prophets who persuade, convince, influence people to help them give up. There are people in churches, there are people outside the church, there are family members who persuade them to stay home. Don't go there. Why are you going to that church? They, 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 they convince you to give up. Who oh, can I read this? Verse 12 in 2 Peter, New Living Translation. Second Peter says in verse 12, these are false teachers, unlike unthinkable animals. They are false teachers. They are creatures of instinct. They are born to, they are born to, to, to catch and destroy. They, they are, this enemy keeps raising up people to destroy your belief system. He, he, just, he, he wants to destroy what you believe in for and walking with God all these years. I'm working on something. Okay, you got it so far. Three things you're talking about. Weirdness, doubting, and giving up. When you're in a state of weirdness, what happens to weirdness? It attacks your body. When you're weird, it attacks your body. You don't feel like it. You're depressed, oppressed, depressed, and you're weary. You're wavering. You just don't know sure no more. You, you and that. You missing out what God is about to do. Now you weary in this season. Do you know how close you are? Do so you know how close you are? Oh, in September. Do you understand how close you are? When you're in a doubting stage, it impacts your mind. When you doubt, what happens? You just don't believe. It impacts the mind. When you are giving up, it impacts your spirit. The danger of giving up in the off season. Weirdness says to me, it's a mental attack and people actually will wear you down. When you're weary, people attacks will wear you down. Wow. Hebrews 12 3 says, For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself. These he be weary and find and find in your mind. Doubting means this. It begins with confessions. When you start to doubt in this season, it begins with confessions, young people. Okay, watch this. Hebrews 10 and 3 says, let's hold fast the confession of, of, of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. I'll give you a scripture to hold on to. You hear me this morning? Let's go fast. See, when you begin to doubt, you lost, you lost your chain. The confession begins to change. You doubt your confession. You, you, what, what would you believe before all of a sudden that change? 
But I, now I get it, as I'm getting out, I, I, I am in an off season. When you don't hear God, you don't feel God, you don't feel His presence no more, that's your off season. Remember now, you sow seed. Alright. Luke chapter 4. Verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. There was a season when the enemy came to Jesus, and there was a season when he left. There was a season when the enemy didn't do nothing. There was a season when he came to torment. Some of y'all feel like you've been in this torment season. It's a season when you let God when everything's fine. You make good money, all is well, kids in school, praise the earth. Good season. Got gas in the car. Don't worry, God's food in the fridge. Kool-Aid ready to go this Sunday morning. The Bible says the devil departed for a season. When there's, listen to this, y'all. In the time of Pentecost, there are four months. From March to September. And it's called Rosh Hashanah in Jewish New Year. What happens? What happened between these four months? Between those four months? It's called, in a Jewish county, it's called a dry season. Some of y'all experience a dry season between those four months. I'm almost finished. Between that span and the dry spell, they say in Israel it's the hottest month in Israel between that time. Everything is dry. But it comes a time on, a, on Pentecost, seven months later, it begins to rain. So guess what? You didn't spirit no rain, but what happened wasn't going to do rain. Everything on the ground was hard, began to soften. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I didn't, didn't do it with mine. So God is saying to me, and saying to you all, life cycles are some but we are connected, believe it or not, as a believer, to everything about the way Jews operate. Believe it or not, what you are. In the month of Pentecost next year, those who have sold last year, they never see the harvest. It's a dry space. During that time when the dry spell, according to what I studied, they never stop sowing seed. When you are in your off season, begin to watch how you talk. In your dry season, begin to watch how you treat people. In your dry season, begin to watch how you treat church and your job. But what happens in a dry season? People think it will change. People think they need to change when you're in a dry season. I didn't think you made a new house. I didn't make a new husband. I didn't make a new wife. I didn't make a new car. I didn't make a new fish. People think change is the, is the way to, to bring back the blessing they need. Are uh, y'all listening to me so far? I'm talking about how the Jews operate. They don't stop sowing. They continue to serve. They continue to be faithful. They don't change that, even though they understand it's a dry season. But we as Westerners, we think it's time to change by doing by all new things, doing things, thinking this change will bring blessing to the house. I, I think it's time to shift. And you already know, you know you're in a dry season. I think I need to shift. Why the season is not for the right people? On the front row. We think it's time to shift in a dry season. But the job, you know, is not paying enough. Or, well, I don't know how I said that. Uh, uh, you know, I need, I, I need to find a new girlfriend. I need to do whatever. You know, you need to time for change. And you realize that's not what you're supposed to be doing. I said that you don't stop changing how you talk to people. I didn't know how to. People are thinking that change is the answer, is not the answer. During this time of dry season, when people feel dry, 
when you in a dry spell, you would almost do anything for change. But you know when back in the Bible days when people would experience a dry spell, it was called a famine. In a famine, those who was, was the desperate for change, desperate for change, they begin to eat other people. You would do anything, you eat anything when you want, when you in dry spell, you are desperate for change. So you gotta do something. So you are doing eating, hear anything in a dry spell. But don't change your flow. Oh, I'm working up for y'all fight quiet in this life. Oh, I'm almost finished this see, I'm almost finished. Almost finished. Between the tabernacle, the feast of tabernacle, the Pentecost is seven to six months. According to Jewish custom, they began to sow last year. When they experienced a harvest, at the end of the six months, there's no, there's no fruit, there's no harvest. So they sold this, they they the sold, they gave nothing happened. It comes a time in a Jewish calendar when it begins to rain. Next year, it's going to be a rainy season. And in that rainy season, all you saw on the ground was hard, beginning something. What's happening, what's happening is that what you saw, now the ground is getting ready to harvest. Amen. Oh, oh. In that rainy season next year, for, for us, that season you sow, all you sow, you're about to reap what you sow. What you talking about, Pastor? I'm almost finished. This is life cycle. This is a life cycle. This is a, a cycle. Your time, your offering, your giving. And in that cycle, all that you gave is not lost. You was wondering why, Pastor, I didn't pay. I didn't sold. I didn't give. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. You was in the last field, but you stopped giving. Don't stop. Don't stop serving. Don't stop supporting. Because it's come a season. You show me what you sow. This is called a life cycle or prison wall. And this time, in this cycle, check your heart, check your love for, keep obeying and doing good. Keep working in the ministry. Keep sowing. Keep giving. Walk upright. Don't complain. Last but not least, don't cast words of discord. Because when you're doing, you're destroying your seed. I got to listen to that one. Be careful how you address a thing in this season. Because even though nothing happens for you, there's going to be a time that rain is going to hit your house. There's a time rain going to hit your territory. It don't feel like a pastor. I hear mean, but I don't feel like a, you, you teach me real, real, real strong. I want to hear some strong. This is strong as going to get today. <laughs> But I want to see you prosperous the right way. And I found this out when God, even me, I experienced a dry season. I didn't hear God. I sold seeds. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to take care of my house. And, and the things not going by expect to plan. I didn't realize in this month of September, it's the you know, God. This is, a, this is one of those things God talked about number four. before. Get ready, y'all, because something is going to happen. It's going to be a rain season again. I mean, it's going to be a rain on your house. It's going to, a, it's going to rain on your head. It's going to rain on your crop. It's going to rain in your crop. It's going to rain. And when it rain, it's going to, it's going to take that ground with the heart all this time. It's going to suck that ground up. Because flesh can't grow in hard ground. So watch your heart. That representation of your heart. God is saying, I want you to experience this because I want you to check yourself. God used the season to check myself. He used the season man up. Because then y'all and all of you born right then, you would appreciate it. Now you because he giving you patience. Patience, oh glory to God. We think she said about patience means about it. When you, when, as a farmer, when you sow seed, it takes a while for certain things to come up. And then when you see the, when you, we see the ear, it's not always, all, something about to happen when you see the ear of the corn. It's not quite corn when you first see the ear, but it's coming up. Somebody say it's coming up. Say it. It's coming up. 
And I believe, I said it, but I believe that if we continue to sow, continue to do good, continue to watch our heart, continue to watch how we say and do a thing, and continue to have faith, don't lose hope when you see it. Because it's going to come a time, all that you did is going to come to you. All that you've done in the past, it's going to come. How you treat somebody? What you gave don't come up. That's why I gave her. That's why I'm here today. I'm here to give. And I believe I'm telling you this morning that if you do what I'm saying today, I believe you're going to spirit their hearts. You've got your honor what I'm talking about. It's Too fast. Wanna miss their season because they don't understand, they don't understand the season. Dry stay will call you men of God to do a bigger thing because you, you want something so bad. You gotta make something happen. You gotta make something happen. I'm tired of my You gotta do something else. It's a boy game thing. <laughs> Make me a meal. You know, we talk about Bully Bingo. That was the best food when you were a kid. You're going to change so bad, you're going to listen to anybody. Hey, that's all food. Cool. Yeah, I got work with that. All of a sudden, over here, it's right. Ain't nothing happening over here. The light ain't nothing happening. All the folks leaving, they, they just quit. You know, I don't know what's happening. I, I'm going to talk about my church. I love my church. I love this church. I love y'all. But I know some people just give up. You know why they give up. You know why they quit. You know, I don't, I know they in a dry state. They look at the change. They feel like if I change, I'm going to get blessed over here, but they ain't nothing happening over here. I ain't sold seed, they ain't seen no harvest. But guess what? Stay a little bit longer. Oh my God, you hear your first time. You stay a little bit longer, oh my God. You stay a little bit longer. And watch, I promise you, watch God. You my testimony. I see you. I've seen you change about three, four times. Promotion, apartments, cars, and God still blessing. That's not the end. You had a child spend your life. You were younger. I, I remember you was a child. You had a child spend. But look at you now. You hear me? My brother will. I remember. I remember. I remember growing up in school. I remember how I me mean, how I did what it was like this life. But when I got saved, I remember when I got saved. I didn't trust God. You didn't know it. Trust God. Don't wait, he says. Every head back. Lord God, I thank you today. Fuck that time, Lord. Fuck that time for people to begin to understand what they are. I pray when I say to them, with enough of him to convince them where they've been and where they're trying to get to and where you're about to take me to. Well, I thank you now that in this hour now of our life, people experience dry spells and dry seasons and didn't understand what was taking place. You are preparing them for the great harvest, but they're about to miss it. So I pray down, Lord God. Don't let no one miss, no one miss their moment. Let no one miss their harvest. Let no one miss what's about to take place in their life. But I, I know it's hard. Father, I know it's hard. I know things are not like it should be. But I pray now, if they keep the faith, keep them strong. Convince them, Lord God, your word, the truth, and has not returned to you in the life. And I pray now, on this great Sunday, that your people, God, will begin to trust you even more. Because it seems like they're in a dry spell, Lord God. There's no harvest. Money is money. So I thank you now, Lord God, you've got to show yourself strong in this next season. 
that are taken down, oh God. They will not lose heart. They will not quit and give up. They will not surrender to the enemy. But trust you all the way and finish the course. So come here this morning. And God has talked to your heart. He is talking to you now. And this don't seem like a, a long trip, but you know I'm talking to you. You know you need help. I have some people in the home right now. I'll pray with you. Agree with you. And then you come on down, I'll pray with you. And then you right now come on down, I'll pray with you. You really say, I'm the grass field of that. I need your help. I'm in the grass field of that. Come on, I need your help. Come on, pray with me. I must do something. Pray with anybody else. Anybody else?